Hey guys, how's it going? So I have to tone down a little bit because it's pretty late. It's one o'clock in the morning, so yeah. <laughs> For those who don't know me, I'm Yoko. I'm a Japanese living in Japan and I'm a huge Trump supporter. And uh, I apologize for not being able to post as many English videos as I want to. But uh, I've been trying to establish this new lifestyle for myself for over two weeks now. Um, because I am really, really broke, to be honest with you. So I'm trying to set everything up and get used to posting videos every day as a start. I just do freelance jobs here and there and it's like not steady at all. YouTube is pretty much all I do so I'm thinking of trying Patreon and stuff as well so um, I'll let you guys know once I launch that project. Anyways enough of the boring stuff. So the last video that I posted was the weird music video. I'm not sure if you guys saw it but uh, in this video I thought that I should explain to you what that video was about and uh, how the content is actually important and serious. <laughs> so it's a parody of PPAP, which stands for Pen Pineapple Apple Pen. <laughs> it's so fun to say Pen Pineapple Apple Pen, Pen Pineapple Apple Pen, Pen Pineapple Apple Pen. I can't say. So Pen Pineapple Apple Pen is written and performed by Pico Taro, who is a comedian in Japan, I think. And I think I'm not sure because he was like nobody in Japan until that video that went really viral. Um, I'm not sure if you guys know it, but uh, yeah, he made this one minute long video and then the song got really viral because Justin Bieber tweeted about it or something like that. And his fans went crazy over it, I guess. So basically, Justin Bieber actually put Pico Taro on the world records so that's amazing anyway so ppap that song is actually important for trump supporters as well you know why because even ivanka's daughter was singing it and uh, there's a video online you know i i believe that ivanka posted the video on instagram and the video of her singing was actually reported a lot on tv here in japan and in, in addition to that, there's a video of her reading a Chinese poem in a fluent Chinese. And some people point out that those videos have political messages to it, you know. But if so, that's very strategic, yet yeah, very natural and efficient, I would say. And it's a very well-driven diplomacy because things like that are important. After PPAP got really viral, um, somebody here in Japan made this internet meme. <laughs> In which you can see Pico Taro's face replaced with our female politician, like liberal politician here. And she's holding two different passports showing that she's got dual nationality, which is illegal here. And the picture made us conservatives laugh so much that it's been going around on the internet for a while now. I was talking to my Japanese political friend about, you know, how funny the meme is. And I was joking that I should make a parody and he was like, Oh, you should do it. And I was like, oh, I should, huh? <laughs> I decided to do that, even though it's kind of embarrassing to act that way, you know? <sighs> but I was like, you know what? I've got nothing to lose, so yeah. So I would like to talk about the female politician, but before that, let me give you the summary of the music video that I made. The point of the video was to show that the leader of the Democratic Party here, which is the biggest opposition party, in Japan is such an anti-Japan, stupid, illegal Chinese pet. <laughs> That's like the worst description, but everything fits her. And yeah, and because she is the leader of the opposition party and she is so stupid, the majority of the citizens here support the governing party, you know what I mean? Because we don't want that opposition party to take power instead. It's the truth, like our current administration led by Prime Minister Abe has been very stable and they haven't been making any critical mistakes or problems even though we still have a lot of problems but it's like fairly okay, you know, and it's way better than other regimes in the past so the rate has actually hit 60% again after three years originally even so the leader that i sang about let me introduce to you um who she is her name is renho 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 the r sound is kind of weird in japanese De, renho. 
She of course has her last name and that is Murata but she only goes by Renho because she used to be talent. Like she's 49 years old or so now, but I'm from another generation. So I don't really know like, you know, what she was doing, like her background, like back in the day. But if you Google her, <laughs> you can easily find her posing almost naked, like in swimsuits for men. <laughs> and yeah all that kind of stuff and it's so weird you know looking at that after knowing her political side so Ren Ho um, became a politician but um, because she was known by Ren Ho <laughs> without her last name I guess she went by her name only first name only her name Ren Ho is actually not Japanese it's Chinese or Taiwanese and it's said that she's a mix of Japanese and Taiwanese it's tricky because in Taiwan there are like you know the kind of Taiwanese people that were there before since before and there are other kinds of uh, Taiwanese people that came from outside like the Chinese land after the World War II and stuff like you should look it up if you don't know what I'm talking about but the important point to note is that just because she's got Taiwanese blood it does not mean that she's pro-Japan like we will imagine because we don't know what kind of Taiwanese blood she's got and plus like she studied in Beijing when she was in college so yeah and she was I think she was pregnant when she was in Beijing so yeah explains well politically Ren Ho is such a democrat like she's been a democrat for such a long time that she's the face of democrats in Japan <laughs> and it's not only conservatives but also the majority of the Japanese people that have common sense hate freaking hate the democratic party and the party knows it too so they changed their party name like partially this year to give a different impression but we're not fooled by that so their support rates is like it's like less than 10 percent yeah and after that they had the election for the you know the president of the party and then who became the leader of the party in march so there are so many idiotic things that Ren Ho has done and said but there are three important records that you guys should learn today and they show her character and they are widely known here so it's something that you should know so there are one budget screening two dual nationality and three spark plugs for cars <laughs> And these are all included in my parody and I will explain these three things to you in this video as for the budget screening I have to give you guys a background but there was a time when the Democratic Party took power for three years in Japan since um, 2009 to 2012 um, until Abe administration was born again and we usually call the three years like the dark three years or the lost three years you know and it's such a special period for us Japanese in a bad way and I believe that the budget screening was held in 2009 for 2010 like I was not interested in politics back then I was busy dating a guy that was done by Hatoyama administration and Yukio Hatoyama by the way used to be called Loopy <laughs> by Washington Post and other American people so you should google it if you're curious so Ren Ho was cutting a lot of budget for a lot of things in Japan and one of her historical famous quote was when she was working on the budget for supercomputer and she said what's the point of being number one in the world? is being number two bad? that's what she said she is a Japanese politician and she doesn't want Japan to be number one in the world or she doesn't care like she could be as bad or worse than Obama like really and she cut a lot of budget on a lot of things like I said and including the Nobel Prize winning project so those Democratic Party years for us is like how Obama administration is to you guys right now man like there was even the huge earthquake in 2011 like you know the um Fukushima disaster and all the world especially the liberal news and stuff they bash Japan for all the things that they imagine you know but uh, yes there were some bad things but 
Well, what was bad was that at that time, our prime minister was Naoto Kan, who is a Democrat, who is often rumored that he naturalized from South Korea. I don't know if that's true, but he killed a lot of innocent Japanese people that didn't have to die by his poor or intentional lead. Like, he deserves to freaking die or be put in jail. In my opinion. Okay, anyway, back to the silly Renho. Um, as for her dual nationality, Renho has had two nationalities until this year, which makes half a century. And I believe that she discarded her Taiwanese nationality by now, but we're not sure. You know why? Because she lied and lied and lied again, just like Hillary Clinton does, you know? <laughs> but yeah, when that problem came up, I personally thought that Lenho would handle it well because I'm pretty sure that she knew about it, you know? So it's, it's a matter of time, like, you never know when you you will get attacked for that kind of thing so you should be always, always ready, but she was not ready! Like, she didn't handle it well! So that's when we conservatives realized that our current administration will probably last for five more years. Even though Lin Ho lies like Hillary, she's not like establishment, you know, because she was posing for magazines and stuff, as I said. But her political talk is something like, maybe like Elizabeth Warren? Or maybe Jill? Like, I don't know, like, I actually don't know how they talk. I've seen Warren speaking like a long time ago, but... Um, I just see their posts on Facebook and judging from that, when they criticize, I get the impression of them being very aggressive and speak actually well. And they almost make you feel like they are smart by the way they present, but if you actually listen, you realize that they're dumb and they're just good at bashing patriots. I have to learn about American um, politicians so I can give you like good examples like you know when there are similar um, politicians and stuff but anyway so then who speaks like a machine gun i would say like she speaks like words after words after words and she, she has this feisty attitude like she will buy you or something with confidence um believing that she's right but she is always wrong and stupid <laughs> so it's so weird but yeah she never gets the point of anything I don't know if that's intentional or she's just ignorant or dumb. It's like I'm talking bad about a person, but this is actually a criticism because she is a stupid person. So when there's a stupid person, I have to use the word stupid, right? Which leads to the next famous record of Ranho's stupidity, which is actually new. Um, this has a lot to do with you guys, actually, because Lin Ho is bashing Mr. Trump in our national diet with the words the liberals were using, like the liberals in the U.S. were using during the presidential campaign. And I'm like, hey, woman, you know what? That stuff, it's old. So after she started to do that, um, Japanese people, like some, even some media, or some articles, you know, um, started to criticize her lack of respect for the American people's decision. But it might be that by bashing Mr. Trump in the national diet, maybe she wanted to show that to the liberals in the United States or elsewhere in the world. And most, uh, most importantly, to the Chinese Communist Party, because she's a Chinese Communist Party's pet. You know, that kind of performance always gets on news and that's when you have the chance to be reported worldwide. So maybe she has that kind of wisdom. Hmm. So because Lin Ho is bashing Mr. Trump, she's of course um, bashing the meeting of Prime Minister Abe and Mr. Trump. To respect President Obama and Mr. Trump, Prime Minister Abe is not revealing what they talk uh, talked about at all, like in details. Um, the mainstream media that's really liberal here can't even talk about that because like, they just don't know. <laughs> um, so Prime Minister Abe believes that he has to keep the promise with Mr. Trump and not reveal what they talked about. But Lin Ho um, keeps bashing Prime Minister Abe that he has the obligation to let us know what they talked about even though it's an official meeting like you know Mr. Trump invited 
or oh, he used the expression that you know um, he had um, uh, Prime Minister Abe stop by at his home. So <laughs> like, why do you have to reveal that? So Prime Minister Abe had to repeatedly explain how to build the trust, uh, but she just wouldn't listen. And she's like, oh, you have the obligation. Like, we need to know. We need to know that kind of stuff. I'm like, give me a break. What's mortifying about her stupidity is the third thing that I'm going to introduce to you guys, which is spark plugs for cars. So in the national diet, while talking to Prime Minister Abe, Denho took out this tiny little um, car piece and said, this has our technology and the share is like 60% of the world or something like that. I don't remember the number exactly, but she said, why didn't you take this as a souvenir for Mr. Trump instead of the golf driver that you gave him? That's what she said. <laughs> And we were all like, oh, what? Like, what? Um, like, ugh, we were so speechless. Like, oh my gosh, like, what is this person saying? What would Mr. Trump do with a spark plug? Like, is he supposed to build a car with it himself with that tiny little piece or something? Like, Prime Minister Abe stopped by at his home and you know, he gave him the driver. It's a gift, a gorgeous gift that Mr. Trump will be pleased. It's so weird that I can't even explain well to you guys. I hope that you can picture the situation. But yeah, anyways, the point is that she doesn't have the diplomacy common sense. By the way, Renho actually got on CNN when she became the um, the leader of the Democratic Party. It's interesting that her tone was completely different when she was being interviewed. She kind of acted cute or innocent because it was a good-looking um, white male that was interviewing maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but again, she's a Chinese pet so I hope that people won't be deceived by her. I am not going to judge on the CNN international crew because they do talk good on like Japanese emperor family and stuff. I mean, I only watched one or two videos of that reports, but uh, they were explaining things well. So I was impressed, you know, so I'm not gonna judge on them. But as for the video that I'm gonna link below, so they took up female politicians like, oh, Japan is finally having female politician leaders or something like that. At least I got the impression like that, but I'm gonna have to say that it's wrong if you think that way, because they're have been a lot of female politicians in Japan even though in our culture usually we cherish the different social roles you know between men and women and even for political party leaders in Japan there have been females like you know for social democratic party that was Takako Doi back in the day um, she actually died <laughs> but later um, Ms. Ho Fukushima took the role and now um, this guy took over, but um, Mizuho Fukushima is often said to be a naturalized person from South Korea, but she's such a liberal, or I mean, she's a social democratic party person, so probably just socialist and stuff. But she always um, teams up with the Japanese Communist Party and stuff, and she's awful. Through the conservatives too, as I um, introduced before, there is the leader of the party for Japanese Kokoro named uh, Kyoko Nakayama. Um, yeah, she's been around for a long time. I mean, she originally, or last year or so, she became the leader, but... But then whole case became the news because it's a democratic party, which is the biggest um, opposition party. And that's the only reason. It's not like, <clears throat> you know, it's the first time that <laughs> female took power or something. Maybe it's not too bad that CNN reports like that because it's actually Prime Minister Abe's strategy. Prime Minister Abe has been working on the image of female politicians and also like working females in the society and stuff. And that is his tactics to be evaluated by the Western countries. Prime Minister Abe is basically trying to tell the Western countries that, you know, we have the same um, cultural standards or social standards and stuff. But that doesn't mean that it's our first time that women are now in the society or in the political field. Like, things have been the same for Japan. Like, 
yeah, even historically. Uh, so Renho will be suffering and Abe administration will stay stable because I hear that there are actually other scandals waiting for her aside from national, uh, aside from dual nationality. Like it's like a game, you know, like the governing party side or conservatives, they still have the bullets to attack the opposition party. Oh man, politics is so fun. So unless there comes a party that we want to replace our governing parties with, the current one will last. And the main opposition party, which is Len Hu's um, party, is so stupid that they're not going to take power. So that's why we think that, you know, our current regime will last. And that's what I titled the PPAP parody song as. But what that means though, that, you know, our um, current administration being stable is that we want them to work on the revision of constitution and so forth and um, like we want them to actually do the jobs as politicians if the foundation is solid. He has two choices, right? One, to take risks and try and revise the constitution and everything and do it like the hardcore way or um, do things safely and let the administration last long instead of taking a risk and um, possibly um, making it shorter, you know? So, man, politics! But anyway, so what I want you guys to know is that Prime Minister Abe and his supporters, including myself, are your allies. Like, we've been fighting the same battles as you guys are in and our enemies are connected with each other so which means that we should be connected with each other too and so we make our bond stronger and we bring peace together oh so cool <laughs> yeah and introduce my channel to your friends please because i need to make this my career or i'll financially die really i'm so sad Anyways, I hope you guys stay safe, alright? <laughs> I will talk to you guys later. Bye!